Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sunday, and welcome back to another session of online Sunday school. I'm Teacher Cat, and I will be your guide for today. I'm so delighted to be able to spend some time together with you. As God's children, it is important to take some time every Sunday to reflect, pray, and discover the wonders of God's word together. Before we begin, shall we open with a word of prayer? I would like you. So follow me in folding your hands, closing your eyes, bowing your heads, and repeating after me. Dear God, thank you for today that we are able to share some time together to explore and learn about your word of life. Thank you for the gift of the Bible. Please help us to have open minds, attentive eyes, listening ears, and receptive hearts as we explore today's story about the strong and courageous Joshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Before we go into today's Bible story, Shall we sing a song first? Today's song I have for you today is called There is a Fountain. And here is how it goes. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face and sinners plunged beneath that blood who sold the guilty stains? Who sold the guilty stains? Who sold the guilty stains? And sinners plunged beneath that blood. Who sold the guilty stains? The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, so vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away, and there may I, so vile as he, wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its time. Till all the ransomed ones of God be safe to sin no more. Be safe to sin no more. Be safe to sin no more. Till all the ransomed ones of God. Be safe to sin no more. I hope that this hymn reminds us of how the fountain of life has been bought with a price when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And now his blood serves to cleanse all our sins and we can always go to him to seek for forgiveness and a new life. Today's Bible story is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, and chapter 10, verses 1 to 28. The title is, Joshua is Strong and Courageous. At the time when Moses was still alive, he addresses people. I am now 120 years old and unable to lead you. God has told me. I will not cross the river Jordan and enter the promised land. But 
the Lord will lead you to overcome the nations living in the promised land. Be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you. He will not fail or let you down. Moses then summoned Joshua in front of everyone, and he said, Be strong, be courageous for you will lead these people into the promised land. See to it that they conquer it. Don't be afraid, for the Lord will be with you and go before you. He will never fail or forsake you. Joshua was full of spirit, full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. He was now their leader, and the people of Israel obeyed him and the Lord. God told Joshua, You are the new leader of Israel. Lead my people across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. It extends from Negev Desert in the south to the Lebanon, mountains in the north, and from the Mediterranean Sea in the west to the Euphrates River in the east, including all the land of the Hittites. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not abandon you or fail to help you. Isn't it glorious that God will want to speak to Joshua personally? And I'm sure that Joshua had faith in God after being in the wilderness and seeing the miracles of God and how he helped his people. Be strong and courageous. Obey every law Moses gave you and you will be successful in everything you do. Remind the people about these laws and think about them every day and night. Be bold and strong. Banish fear and doubt. For remember, the Lord is with you wherever you go. After three days, the officers gave orders to move into the promised land. When you see the Ark of the Covenant being carried by the priests, you are to follow it at a distance. Joshua told everyone to get their lives right with God for the next day, they would see him do amazing things. To get to the promised land, they had to cross a river, the Jordan River. But many of them could not swim. So what do you think is going to happen? Let's see. The next day, Joshua told the priests to lead off carrying the Ark of the Covenant towards the River Jordan. The river was in flood and dangerous to cross. God told Joshua to tell the priests when they got to the river bank not to stop, but to go and stand in the river. As soon as the priests' feet entered the water, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It stood up in a large heap some distance away at a town called Adam. The priests stood in the middle of the riverbed on dry ground while the people crossed into the promised land. Doesn't this scene look familiar? That's right. Does it remind you of how God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to cross to escape from the Egyptians? What a miracle. The Israelites were now ready to face their first challenge. Ahead of them, was the heavily defended walled city of Jericho. The Lord told Joshua, I have delivered Jericho to you. For six days, march around the city with all the armed men. Have seven priests with ram's horn, trumpets lead the way. Then on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When they sound a long blast and the army shouts, 
the walls of the city will collapse. On the seventh day, they set off at daybreak and marched around the city walls seven times. The seven priests led the way, blowing their rams, horn, trumpets. When the trumpets blasted and the army shouted, the walls of the city miraculously collapsed. And that is how the city of Jericho was taken. Joshua and the Israelites had captured Jericho and Ai by now. The nearby Gibeonites had deceived Joshua into believing that they were from a faraway land and made a treaty with him. They were now wood gatherers and water carriers for the Israelites. The leaders of the tribes of the land of Canaan, which was the promised land, were dismayed. The people of Kebion were now allies of the Israelites. So, King Adoni Zedek of Jerusalem sent messengers to several other kings, Hoham of Hebron, Piram of Jarmuth, Jephia of Lashish, and Debir of Eglon. They agreed to combine their, army, their armies to attack Gibeon to defeat the Israelites. The men of Gibeon sent messengers to Joshua at his camp in Gilgal. Come at once, save us, help us, they pleaded. All the Amorite kings who live in the hill country have joined forces to attack us. Joshua and his entire army set out for Gibeon. Don't be afraid of them, the Lord told Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. That night, the Israelites took the Amorite armies by surprise and chased them as they fled. As the Amorites retreated, the Lord sent a terrible hailstorm. The hail killed more of the enemy than the Israelites killed with their swords. Joshua needed daylight to destroy the enemies, so he prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ajalon. And do you know what happened? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky and did not set as a normal day. During the battle, the five kings escaped and hid in a cave at Makeda. Joshua commanded, cover the opening of the cave with large rocks and put guards at the entrance to keep the kings inside. The rest of you continue chasing the enemy and don't give them a chance to go back to their town. The Lord has given you victory over them. The Israelites totally wiped out the five armies of the five kings, except for a tiny remnant that managed to reach their fortified towns. Then Joshua said, remove the rock covering and the opening of the cave and bring the five kings to me. Joshua then defeated the five kings. Joshua then captured and destroyed the town of Makeda, and therefore he conquered many cities that day. The Israelites went to capture the cities of Libna, then Eglon, Hebron, and Debir before returning victoriously to Gilgal. God's people had to fight many more battles to take over the promised land, but Joshua was not afraid. He knew that his people could trust God to lead them and win each battle. Although we do not have to fight anyone, we are fighting against sin and Satan. We can trust the Lord to fight our battles for us as we stand against Satan. Remember, we can trust God to help in our fight against the evil in this world. Now, shall we review who 
Bible verses that we have memorized before. The first comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And next from Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And now comes our first catechism, questions 46 to 50. Question 46. Did our Lord Jesus Christ ever commit the least sin? No, he was holy, harmless, and undefiled. Question 47. How could the Son of God suffer? Christ, the Son of God, became man that he might obey and suffer in our nature. Question 48. What is meant by the atonement? Christ satisfying divine justice by his sufferings and death in the place of sinners. Question 49. What did God the Father undertake in the covenant of grace to justify and sanctify those for whom Christ should die. Question 50. What is justification? It is God's forgiving sinners and treating them as if they had never sinned. Now, shall we close in prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we can always go to you with our troubles and worries. Thank you that we can trust you to be near us always. Please give us strength and courage to trust you as we serve you. Now shall we sing the psalogy together? One, two, three. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, God is the source of courage in our battle against evil. Be strong and be courageous in the Lord. Goodbye, and until next time.